Hello and good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to another Kids Connection program. I am so happy that you've decided to join us today. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. Today, we're going to be connecting with God and some interesting stories about the Israelites. And we're going to be talking about faith today. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be a fun adventure. I'm going to do an experiment and you guys are going to share that. You guys are going to see that. And hopefully mom and dad can help you see how that works at home too, if you have the ingredients. Okay, so stick around. Let's get our program started. We have a lot happening today right here at Kids Connection, as well as Vallejo Drive Church. Stay tuned. At the end, I'm going to be talking about what's happening at Vallejo Drive Church today, this afternoon. So don't go anywhere. Let's get our program started by singing our song of the day because I'm trusting you. Let's sing it together. This was a fun song. I remember this is actually one of the most favorite songs that all the kids really enjoy singing here at Kids Connection. Keep coming back during the week and sing this song again. It's going to be on our page here on the very bottom of our Kids Connection page so we can sing it again and again later in the week. Thank you for singing with us. I invite you now to close your eyes, bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear God, Thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. We invite you to be a part of this program now as we worship your name. 
Thank you for all the boys and girls that are watching at home, moms and dads, grandpas, grandpa, grandmas, and aunts and uncles, the whole family. Thank you so much. Whoever is watching us right now, we ask that you bless each one of them as we worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for praying with us, for joining us for another program. Now we're going to watch a story of someone who didn't know Jesus. And then he met a friend that had a special invitation for him. And after that, his life changed. And what is he doing now as he continues to share the love of God with other people? Let's watch our missionary story for today. I was living in an unacceptable way to God. As a young man, I began attending parties and drinking. I was also going to clubs. One day, I was at home watching TV when a pastor came on and said, if you ask God to show you his true people, he will show you his church. I didn't know how to talk to God or how to pray, but that night I prayed that God would show me his true church. That was Friday night. The very next morning as I went to fetch water, I met a friend who asked me where I was going. I told him that I was taking a shower to go out so he invited me to go to church with him. I said, yeah, sure. Then I finished getting water, showered, and went to church with him. I've been in that church ever since and was baptized on May 1st, 2010. I work as a barber. It's from this profession that God blesses me with an income to pay my transport to Caldera, where I go as a missionary. I first went there to preach and I simply fell in love with the people. So I asked my church to send me there as an assistant. Shortly after I arrived, the leader left and I became the main person to head this ministry. It's been a difficult journey, but God goes before me. It can cost me 80,000 dobras round trip. When I can't afford this, God gives me the strength to take the bike taxi there and walk the way back. When it's a week of prayer, I do it alone. I go there without anyone. Sometimes the meetings go until 8 or 9 because many people have questions, and I don't like to leave anyone with doubts. So I walk back with God's company. He is the only one who can keep me safe. I arrive safely. Nothing has happened to me. God has always guided me. The people of Caldera are lovely and like to listen to God's word. Our biggest challenge is the lack of a shelter to worship in. On Wednesdays and Fridays, we worship under a solar-powered light. On Sabbaths, we worship in a tiny house. We are praying that God will bless us to get a roof and shelter. Jesus left us a mission. He said, go ye into all the world, making disciples and preaching the gospel to all creatures, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This motivates me to take the message of God to this remote group of people. May God's Spirit bless us to further the work in Caldera and to reach the communities around it. If you are watching this video, please pray that God's Spirit will assist us to win this battle and be able to preach the gospel. The missionary stories are always amazing and it's so nice to see how people are preaching the love of God to other people in other places of the world and how they are devoted uh, to preach and to be missionaries and how much they need our help. So if you haven't done it, please ask mom and dad to donate to the missionaries, clicking on the link above here where it says donate to the missionaries uh, around the world. Thank you so much. Now, today we're going to be talking about faith. And I'm going to try to explain a little bit about faith in a different way to you guys. Let me ask you something. Have you ever gone to the doctor? And when you get to the doctor, the doctor says, well, um, I need to see your throat. Can you open your mouth and say, uh, have you done that? 
and he asks you to stick stick your tongue out, right? So it goes, uh, why does the doctor ask you to do that? Do you know? Well, I learned something this week because I wasn't too sure. I, I thought I knew and I knew one of the things, but I didn't know the other. Well, let me share this with you. And hopefully next time you go to the doctor, you'll remember this. Um, the doctor asks you to say, ah, with your mouth open because he wants to check the muscles inside of your, by, by your throat, all the way in the back. He wants to see if those muscles are vibrating and they are working properly. So when you say, ah, uh, the muscles vibrate on the walls and they want to make sure that you, that everything is working okay. Now, another interesting fact is that, do you know what a uvula is? Well, a, the uvula is that little thing that hangs on the back of your throat right? All the way inside when you open your mouth, when you open your mouth, um, when you have a chance, look yourself in the mirror and open your mouth really wide. And you're going to see that pendulum hanging on the back of your throat. That's called the uvula. Now, the doctor looks at your uvula because he wants to see the shape of your uvula. It has to be uh, like on a punching bag shape and the color has to be like reddish pink to make sure that you are healthy and if that's how your uvula is then you're healthy but sometimes our uvula is not on that punching bag shape it is uh, lopsided and if it is lopsided or sometimes it even has some dots on it that means that you could have sinus or you could be coughing or have been coughing a lot and that's how the doctor knows that you are, uh, if you make sure that you are sick, that you're well and you're not sick is by looking in your throat and they know that how you are and your health is. Now you know, next time you go to the doctor, you remember this. Yes, the doctor is checking my uvula and he's also checking the muscles on your, on your throat. And that's how he knows you are healthy. It, that makes sure, he wants to make sure that you're healthy. Now, the thing is, even though you don't know why the doctor asked you to open your mouth and say, ah, in front of him, you do it anyways. Why do you do it? Well, when the doctor asked me to do that, I do it because I know he is a doctor and he knows what he's doing. And I know that he's looking for my best well-being. And by doing that, he knows what he's doing. And that is called faith. Faith is believing in something even though you don't know what it is or you know that the doctor is doing the best to make sure that you are okay. That is being having faith. Now, in our story today, we're going to learn about faith. And we're going to learn how the Israelites had to have faith. Now, I'm going to share something else with you. Um, let me bring a couple things here at the table so I can, I can um, do a little experiment and help you guys understand uh, something else. And here we have it. In front of me, I have a jar, clear jar, with a little bit of baking soda inside, just so you know. I also have vinegar here. Now, a mixture of baking soda and vinegar creates something. I'm going to be talking about that in a second. But, and I also have a box of matches. These are long matches. Look at this. All right, so these are fireplaces matches. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And with mom or dad assistance at home, and if you have the ingredients, you can also do this to see how it works. Now, check this out. I'm going to grab vinegar, and I'm going to pour some vinegar inside of this jar with baking soda in it. 
confetti. There we go. There we go. And I think that's going to do it just fine. We're going to shake this a little bit. All right. Now you see the baking soda mixing with the vinegar on the bottom? There you go. Is that all you see? Now, watch this. I'm going to light this match. And I'm going to put it inside. Wait, let's make sure that we have a nice flame going. Okay, here we go. Now, watch what happens when I put this match inside of the jar. Ready? Whoa. What was that? Did you see that? You want to see it again? Watch this. Let's wait for all that smoke to go away, to clear out. Ready? Here it is. Here is the match. There's nothing inside this jar. But when I put the match inside the jar, it goes out. Why did that happen? Well, this is science. And now I'm gonna try to explain to you what happened here. The combination of vinegar and baking soda creates something that it's called carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a mixture of these two ingredients that creates a gas and this gas is called carbon dioxide. What happens with carbon dioxide? Well, carbon dioxide doesn't have oxygen in it and it's heavier than oxygen. Now, as we all know, oxygen is needed to create fire. And if the fire is taken to a place where there is no oxygen, the flame goes out. Now, we can't see carbon dioxide inside of this jar. Can you? It's just clear. We can't see it. Now there's still some smoke here. But because carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen, it stays inside and it doesn't allow oxygen to penetrate. So when we light a match and we put inside and because we don't have oxygen, the flame goes out. That proves that carbon dioxide is inside the jar. This is also the same chemicals or the same gas that is used on fire extinguishers. And that's why we use that to put out fires because once we blow carbon dioxide to the fire, it extinguishes, it puts out the fire because there is no oxygen on carbon dioxide. Even though we can't see carbon dioxide, but we know that there's carbon dioxide here because the flame was extinguished. The flame went out as soon as we put it inside. Now, in today's story, today's lesson, we are going to learn about a story of, on the, of the Israelites, where the Israelites were fighting a bigger power just like the carbon dioxide heavier than oxygen. And the Israelites were trying to fight that, but they didn't know how, even though they couldn't see it, but how God helped them and how they needed to have faith to fight that power that was stronger than they than them. So stick around, don't forget, the carbon dioxide, the gas, and what it does, puts out the fire. You can't see it, but it's here. It's called faith. We have to believe. Let's hear the story later today on how the Israelites had to depend on God and how they had to have faith in God to fight the fight that was stronger than they were. Than they were. So stick around. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Ask mom and dad to see if they can help you do this experiment at home. And now you know that vinegar and baking soda creates the gas called carbon 
dioxide. Awesome. Now that we experience the carbon dioxide experiment, I'm going to invite you guys to sing the song of the day one more time. All right, did you have fun singing the song again? Do you remember singing the song here at Kids Connection? Well, very soon we're gonna be singing that song together again here at Kids Connection. Keep praying for our return to our church and hopefully it'll be very soon and I can't wait to see you guys here at Kids Connection. Now, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes so we can finish our program with a prayer today. Dear God, Thank you so much for all your power and thank you because we have the faith in you. Thank you because we trust you and thank you because you are good. Help us to continue to trust you even though all these things are happening around us. And help us to continue to be good boys and girls to glorify your name. Be with us today now that we learn more about you in our lesson. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. Here are a couple announcements for you. Mom, Dad, today is the second Sabbath of the month, June 13. And this afternoon, we have Parents Connection. We're gonna connect on Zoom. 
So mom and dad, you are welcome to connect with other moms and dads. And we're going to be talking and chatting, making sure that everyone is okay this afternoon at 2.30. Okay? Via Zoom. Now, remember that I was saying that this week was a hot week? And whoa, it was hot. Today's also going to be a hot day. But we have something very cool happening. Guess what we're going to do? We are going to celebrate the graduates. Oh, wow. This is so nice. Were you, have you graduated from kindergarten? Or do you know someone who graduated from eighth grade? Or do you know someone who graduated from college or from high school or from any higher degree? Well, this afternoon, we are going to honor all those people who have graduated right here at church, at Vallejo Drive Church. How is that? A few members, some members of the church, including the pastors, I am also going to be there. We have decorated our cars with balloons, with signs, with, with whistles and bells and drums and music. And this afternoon, we are going to be in the church's parking lot between 4 and 5.30 for an hour and a half, and we're going to invite everyone who have graduated in this past week or the week before or this year, if you have graduated, come by the church. We are throwing a party for you. It's a drive-through party. It's a drive-through graduates celebration. And we're going to cheer you up. We're going to wish you success. We are going to sing with you. We're going to jump up and, jump and down with joy because you deserve to, to be the honor. You have accomplished something amazing. You graduated. Did you graduate kindergarten? If you did, ask mom and dad to bring you to the Vallejo Drive Church parking lot this afternoon starting at 4 o'clock. You're going to drive through and all the cars are going to be there and we're going, to, we're going to celebrate your graduation with you. Come on by, say hello. If you don't, if you haven't graduated, ask mom and dad to come anyways, decorate your car so we can help honor other people. And we're going to recognize what they did and the, accompl the accomplishment that they had. So come on, come on by the church this afternoon and we're, we're hoping that you guys can join us. Now, this is today. Tomorrow, tomorrow is Sunday, Sunday the 14th. We are going to ask mom and dad to join us for a church business meeting. It is important that you join us tomorrow. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to join forces with you because it is our church. It is our voice, your church, your voice. We want to hear your opinion and we invite you to be a part of that. If you haven't received the email with the invitation for the business meeting tomorrow, just email the church, Vallejo at graceandcondition.com and say, I didn't receive the email to join the business meeting on Sunday. Can you send it to me, please? We'll go ahead and we'll send the invitation. There's a link there for Zoom. Log in at 9.30 for prayer time or at 10 o'clock for our meeting. We're going to be discussing some important things about our church and we're going to be making some important decisions as well and it is good for all the members of Alejo Drive Church to be there and support the pastors and support the, the people that are waiting for your decision and uh, for your collaboration on what you have to say so don't forget zoom tomorrow at 9 30 for prayer or 10 o'clock for the meeting and it sh we should be done before noon, um, hopefully. Okay, so we're, we're hoping to see mom and dad tomorrow in our meeting. Great, well, now let's go ahead and jump right into your lesson. The teachers have prepared the lesson this week and we're going to be talking about faith and how the Israelites had to depend on that faith to help them carry through. Uh, let's watch our story in our Sabbath school after today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying around. Thank you for singing with us and worshiping God. We hope to see you 
soon here at Valejo Drive Church and Kids Connection. Until then, I love you guys. See you next week. Bye-bye. Have a great week. Hello, everyone. How are you guys? Hope everything is well. I'm missing my favorite psychics, Carlina and Sammy. But unfortunately, I had to re-record the video. And so you'll see that this video doesn't match the next one. But anyways, let's get started um, with the kindergarten lesson for uh, tomorrow, June 13th. And what is the reason that we study the lesson? Why do we do that? I ask the question to Sammy and Carlina, my daughters, every time. Because when we do this, there has to be a purpose. We got to do it, you know, with passion. We got to do it to learn. We got to do it to please God. And that's the reason. So repeat with me. I'm here to learn about God and to grow in their relationship with Him. So the lesson for today is about Deborah. Deborah is one of the judges uh, that comes out in the book of Judges. And she was a faithful woman. She trusted God, even though a lot of people of her time didn't, in her own nation, so that we're supposed to be believers in God. So it's kind of like, you know, in our church, like, that we're supposed to be followers of God, and then people that within the same church don't even trust in God. And she still had to face that, and she still had the faith to believe in God and follow the direction that he gave her, and so she was able to um, win a battle and be a successful judge, all because she trusted in God. So let's let's read the memory verse or the Bible verse for today. Um, it's in Proverbs. Let's hold on a second. Um, so Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I'm going to read it from uh, three different versions. So it says, Place your trust in the eternal. Rely on Him completely. Never depend upon your own ideas and intentions. Give Him the credit for everything you accomplish, and He will smooth out and straighten the road that lies ahead. That's one version the Bible. There's another translation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Rely on Him on what you think you know. Remember the Lord in everything you do and He will show you the right way. And finally, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do and He will show you which path to take. So, what does it mean to trust in God? Trust is having faith. What's having faith is the completely believing. So, for example, if you know things are not going my way, uh, say I'm looking for a direction, right? And somebody is giving me gave me directions, right? Say Google Maps, right? And it kind of looks like I'm headed the wrong way, and it, you know, this is like this is not gonna gotta be the place. But I gotta put my trust in Google Maps that it's really gonna take me to the to the you know to the place where I want to go. So that's some sort of that's one one way to demonstrate trust to actually believe. So God is similar to the. Google Maps or Siri giving you the directions is telling you how to do it, where to go, and we need to follow the, those directions with all our heart, meaning that you know God says this in the Bible, God says this through my parents, God says this in my feelings, and I gotta follow it with all my heart. I gotta believe it. And if we actually follow God with all of our heart, with all of our passion, 
we trust in one of the verses it says we trust in the eternal things meaning that God is powerful he's the one that created things he's the one that gives us life he's the one that gives us strength he's the one that gives us the will to live he's the one that gives us healing and we trust in his power in, in these things you know our lives will be easier our, our lives will be the way God wants them to be our lives will be changed so we are asked to trust in God not trust in, in men when what they say and maybe they're you know if God says trust in me and everybody else is scared we don't need to be scared um, if God says, you know, uh, if you God ask God through prayer, to talking to Him, and He reveals something to you, and you truly believe it's from God, it's something that we should all do. We should all follow our, our intuition relating to God. And, you, you know, of course we also have to follow Him through... Um, Bringing the the the, the uh, spirit, the fruits of the spirit in our lives. So the the only, the only way that we know that we're following God is if we have love, if we have peace, if we have compassion to others, and that means that we're connected to God because God is these things. He, God is peaceful. God is love. God is compassion to everybody. He has this unloving, I mean loving um, ways to everybody, to the whole world, no matter who we are. And we need to have those things so that if we're related to God and doing these things that He asks us to do, then we'll have a closer relationship with God. We'll be able to follow Him with all our heart. We'll be able to be all that He wants for us. So that's, that's my prayer, and I think that's what, for myself and for you guys, and that's what God wants us for us. He wants us to be leaders like Deborah, you know, follow Him no matter the, what the circumstances, and trust in Him, believe in Him, believe that He's going to take us the right way and he's going to enhance us, our life in the best way possible. So, next we're going to do a craft um, related to trusting in God. So, for detailed instructions, you can go to YouTube and, and type Dowdy Thomas Craft, and it'll give you a, 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 a special directions. But you, you will need construction paper, scissors, and, and glue. And you're going to create a hand. And each, in each hand, or finger, sorry, you're going to put something related to how God, how you can put your trust in God. What things can you do to have this connection with God, to, to have this belief in God. Okay, as an additional learning tool, I encourage you to go to youtube.com and search Deborah and Gideon Kids, and the animated story about Deborah will come up, and you can learn about her story and how she trusted God. Hi, these are how our crafts turned out. So we have a hand, and in each hand we wrote the things that are going to help us to be closer to God. Carlina, can you tell us about your hand? Mine uh, in the center says connecting with God and it has a little dot. And then on the thumb I wrote prayer. And then on the index finger I wrote being happy. And then the middle finger I wrote joyful moments. Ring finger loving others. And pinky uh, calm moments. Daddy, um, Great. Mine says clean up. It says clean up. Yes, yeah, it says clean up. Um, it's uh, this one. 
Uh, it says study the Bible. Study the Bible. And um, um, look at or watch Superbook and watch learn. And then. And then um, yeah. know God. Know God. And um. Prayer. Uh, and pray. Prayer, which means um going God. Right? All right. So these are the things that. We all need to practice to get closer to God and trust God. All right, thank you for sharing the lesson with us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the blessings. Help us to trust you every day and help us to have love and compassion. And that way we'll be closer to you. Thank you for all that you do. And bless us all. Bless every single kid and parent watching. And help us to be closer to you. And we just pray. Amen. Amen. So bye-bye. Thank you for joining us. And remember, love and compassion.